Uh, we're here with Dan Lucas for Record Production um, at Anchor Baby Recording, and we're in the heart of Kent, uh, not far from Canterbury. Um, take us through. Let's oh, sure, um, yeah. have a look inside. So let's, um, let's have a look through the yeah. um, through this, and we'll come back to the uh, I guess the old machine room. As yes. It was. Yeah. Yeah. And this is really reminiscent of um, studios of yesteryear with a, a little <laughs> airlock with a yeah. your booth. Yeah, there's a bit of storage up there as well. Wow. Yeah, but it's just, uh, yeah, full of guitar cases great. and mic boxes and stuff. You know, if I have the kit over here and I put the screens around it, you can go almost sort of Pink Floyd dry. Right. And, uh, and then if I have the kit over here, it, it sounds like a huge room if the kit's over in that corner. Um, and then, of course, you've got the booth as well. But, I mean, generally, I tend to record the drums here. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's just a night. There's enough space to... I uh, If I'm tracking a band live, uh, usually the amps are in there, but yeah. there's enough space for everyone to stand in here with their pedal boards and, uh, yeah. Like it's, What's uh, interesting is um, if Mike does a shot of that, he may even have a still of it. He isn't using a really wide-angle lens. The wall is actually curved, yeah, that's which right, yeah. um, is really disconcerting. When you look at it. <laughs> but that's really cool because that obviously contributes to it not having any nasty slap and yeah. everything about it. Yeah, everything just feels good. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know who designed it. I know my, um, well, the the guy that had it built uh, originally in in '89. Um, he got a proper studio designer to right. design the rooms, but I don't know who that was. So through here, a really sizable uh, second room yeah. with a totally different um, sound to it. That one's carpeted, and this isn't the old lovely yeah, do you know, parquet floor. I always floor. found that, I don't know if that is an odd choice, having carpet, and I always right. kind of thought, do you know, that's... It's all right when you've got um, a ceiling as large yeah, as Yeah, well, that. that's, what, that's what I thought. When I took the place over, I thought, actually, because of the wooden ceiling... Yeah. You know, it's it's all right, but well, I'm sure it doesn't sound. Yeah, you can generally get a sense when you walk into rooms what they yeah. what they feel like. This is lovely. I mean, you put some. Well, I guess it was already here this treatment, but yeah, again, this is nothing nasty about it. It's, it's great as it was, other than I've painted it. Um, oh, but um, yeah, it's a 1969 supergroup, wow. which you should be familiar with I doing am. all your Black Sabbath yeah. stuff. Has it blown up much? Uh, it's had numerous problems, sure. but it's fine now. Touch wood. It wasn't until I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but right, um, I've got a Laney clip there as well, because I know they were... I think the Laney clip is supposed to be that with his fuzz sound built right. into it, but they sound like completely different yeah. amps. He actually um, said he never used the clip. <laughs> no, I mean, it, the, the clip <laughs> sounds more like a Selma yeah. or something, whereas that's a lot more martial -y. That's cool. Um, but... Um, but yeah, this I sometimes record drums in here. It's good bet, for a yeah. kind of in utero sort yeah. of Steve Albini kind of drum sound. Nice. Uh, you know, I'll it's, it's stick a Beta 91 on the door or something. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get that kind of nice tight sort of room sound. Um, great for brass as well. And what's um, really interesting there is this is the first time well, I've seen two of these quad reverbs <laughs> in the last two months. Oh, right. One was at Hans... I wasn't there. It was on a, on a video of Warren Hewitt's. And uh, Hansa Tone Studios, they had a quad reverb. I didn't even know they did it, and you've got one. Do you know, a lot of people, but a lot of even Fender enthusiasts have Amazing. come in and they're like, I've never seen a quad reverb. Wow. But they brought out the Fender Twin and the Fender Quad. Yeah. identical amps but obviously the quad is a 4x12 yeah. but because of the size of them and they weigh a ton yeah, they were i mean fender twins are heavy enough yeah. they were just massively unpopular and they sort of pulled the plug on them but it sounds exactly the same as a fender twin yeah um but you know it's fine in a studio like it's not really moved around a lot um it's lovely. I mean, I said it earlier in the control. You, you've really got some lovely um, backline stuff. I mean, hearkening back to your um, your Pink Floyd influences, yeah, with Well yeah. and HH. That's right. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's that, great. Um, it's a guitarist playground, isn't it? Which is once the band attract, there's quite a lot of emphasis well, on people wanting to try stuff. Yeah, I mean, you and you know, I've, I was saying to Mike earlier when we were chatting, you find that it inspires them if they, yeah. they've got a new pedal to use or a really cool sounding amp that they might have heard about and they've never got to... It yeah. just makes the whole thing more exciting and then you get better performances out of people. But I'd in my early days of recording, there were so many occasions where I'd think, right, I want the guitar to sound like this. And then I'd think, 
I've literally got one amp. Yeah. And if they haven't, the band haven't got an amp that does it, we're really limited. So mm. I've been accumulating this stuff. Well, so I think that... that's really important because I think a lot of people have become, a, become obsessed with gear in the wrong sense. They become obsessed with preamps and, mm. um, you know, and use this well, on this the This is your source material. Yeah, isn't it's it? like you get more inspiration out of a player. Yeah. A friend of ours, Andy Sneap, everybody knows him. Yeah, um, he says if you, you know, if you buy one guitar and you get a song out of it, it's been worth buying. Mm. And it's really true. I mean, that's what he says to his girlfriend. <laughs> well, well, you know. It's absolutely right. It's inspirational stuff. Yeah, and Some parts can just completely um, change shape, like based yeah. on what they're, you know, you could have a guitarist playing for an amp and they're really uninspired. And then oh, this re needs a really nice clean sound. And yeah. then you'll plug them into like that Sound City Concord. Yeah. And then they go, oh, wow, that sounds great. And then they play better. Exactly. And then they come up with a better part. And, you know, or it might be a pedal that they all suddenly right into the sound yeah. of the pedal and then yeah. you get this part that you'd never have got Absolutely. otherwise so um you know all that you know that's the that's where it all starts isn't it Brilliant. so it's um it's definitely worth getting that right um but you know nice. I, uh, it's a, a constantly growing <laughs> and there's other stuff like i, I lend it. stuff out to people um but yeah, it, I've got sort of most angles covered yeah. and some rare things. Like that's an 8x10 guitar cab that Amazing. Orange only made really briefly in the mid 70s. But I find I go through phases as well. Like at, at one point, I'm using that 70s high watt all the time. Yeah. Now I love that. You know, in a few months, I'll be tracking everyone through that Cornford cab. Like it's, it's just nice to have different options. Yeah. But. That's got a real kind of creamy sort of mid-range, that cab. That's cool. Is that a Bayer? I'm ripping on that. On that's eyesight. an M160 Bayer, that's really yeah. Cool. That's the way a ribbon mic should be. You can point it at things. <laughs> you don't have to think about it. Yeah. That's great. But yeah, that's like, I've probably had that mic longer than anything else I yeah. own. Um, but um, I could do it with another one of those, really. <laughs> but again, that... I, well, I would be able to record a guitar without it, but I wouldn't want to. No, like that exactly. Whenever I'm recording a guitar, that comes out. Um, but yeah, there's weird, like this is a, uh, it's a bit knackered, this thing. Let's see if I can get the front off of it. Yeah. This is, a, it's one of these weird diamond configuration things. Oh, wow. Yeah, really obscure looking thing. Oh, wow. um, it's a Fender basement cab, but they, they brought out these, uh, I can't remember the proper name for it. It's not a diamond cab. It, it's got another name, but... It's almost it's, like one of the bass bin horn load, if, you know, effects from the old yeah, PAs, isn't it's, it? That's it's weird. a really unusual sounding thing. Yeah, but, you know, it's it's made it onto a few recordings, yeah. and uh, so I say, can justify having it in here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I suppose we want to zoom right at the other end. Yeah. <laughs> The long track. We should get Mike going back because he's famous <laughs> yeah. for that. Well, yeah, he might uh, <laughs> yeah, watch out. <laughs> stack it on those. <laughs> but again, there's. I've got a couple of Selmas there, oh, yeah. some old HHs. These sound amazing. Like this, if I had to keep one amp, it would be this one. Right. Um, but these are great. They take pedals really well, especially right. fuzz pedals. Like a lot of the heavier bands I record, they have these big kind of fuzzy, stonery guitar sounds mm. and octave pedals. Um, but these just have more low end than anything. So were these age, age ones? Were they were they PA star things? Or are they actually no, no, they the are. That's yeah. the IC one hundred. Right. Um, I mean, I think really, if you're gonna have an HH amp. The IC100 was the one to have right. because it's got this, well, it says sustain, but it's basically a solid state drive. Oh, okay. And you can't control the level of it. It's either it's on rough. or off, but it's the sound of T-Rex used one. Oh, okay. Roger Waters used that for his bass. Right, okay. Um, and uh, what's the song by the Buzzcocks, Ever Fallen In Love? Yes. Yeah. That guitar sound, that's the IC100 apparently. Um, cool. But they sound great, and they sound really, really good on the clean channel, cranked up full. Like they, a, a lot of people, you know, think that solid state amps sound really cold and hard, mm. but those ones just don't. Like they sound fantastic. Yeah, I was using. I'm trying to think what the um. There was a there's a famous bass amp. I know that um, 
Oh God, um, what, UAD modelled. No, it was something recent. Anyway, it was it was a transistor bass amp, and it's yeah. it's a classic. Um, I'll think about it. But I used it. Um, a friend of mine happened to have one. Yeah. And it was like, whoa, this is incredible, and it's a solid state bass amp. Yeah. But it was just this little head. I wish I could remember what it was. And that it, obscure, but brilliant. You have to really carve into this yeah. stuff. Like if you just plug into it, people probably would go, oh, it sounds all cold and hard and horrible, but. If you slam the volume right up yeah. and you get the right player, like they can sound amazing. Yeah, totally. Um, but it's I've just got them really just for that sustain mm. thing. Um, I've just got two because a, a friend of mine who's a videographer, his video studio, it used to be the practice place of Kiki D. Right. And when she moved out, she left a load of broken stuff there wow. so there's two of those they've got a name printed on the top of them Brilliant. um and he was using them as door stops wow. and he just gave them to me and uh i got them repaired and they both work perfectly now Brilliant. but he also gave me this um it's going to draw attention which to your is, um, cupboard of pedals yeah but this the ps1 oh, made wow. by maestro which were made by gibson guitars this is the original phaser like the first phaser yeah, that was ever made. Yeah, they used to do the phase mistress, didn't they? That's right. Oh. But these are like the holy grail yeah. of phase pedals. Um, but they were designed under there. There's a screw for it to go on onto a mic stand. <laughs> right. um, but the switches were sort of big enough that guitarists could oh, actually sure. switch them on and off. Yeah. But when you um, when you flick the switches, it ramps up a bit like a Leslie speaker. Oh, cool! Um, but they're so rare, yeah. like really hard to come by, and there's no true bypass. Right. And they warm up the signal like nothing I've nice. ever heard. So sometimes I use it, and it's not even switched on. Right. Just run stuff through it. Um, but he had that in there. She had left that behind, and again, it didn't work. I took yeah. it to my guy. Thirty quid later, works perfectly. Um, but they're worth quite a lot of money now. Wow. But that, yeah, that lives in the cupboard until it's required. But again, that was all, it was just all covered in moss and yeah. it sat in there for it's ages. Amazing, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Sometimes people just have this stuff lying around. Yeah, and, uh, and a lot of people just want to get rid of it. I mean, yeah. like the organ, somebody's going to want to get that out of their nan's yeah, of course. bedroom, you know. Um, but I mean, this stuff, like we were saying, bands come in and then they see it. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, let's plug that in. Yeah. And then they'll write a part that yeah. they would, never would have created otherwise. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's mostly uh, mostly fuzz pedals in there. Wow. And then we're into the... Snare old, drum help. Well, the old <laughs> machine room. Yeah. Um, what was in here? An old um, two inch? So uh, two two inch 24 track machines, oh, okay. A800s, I think. Cool. Um, but again, one of them was still around when I took the place over, but it was then sold off. And yeah. then in that rack there, there were a load of Akai S1000 and 2000 okay. samplers. Right. Um, and then all the old EDAC connections from uh, are on the wall still down oh, there. Yeah. Um, nice. But I just use it for storage now. Right. Um, and then there's my sort of mic cupboard. Yeah. And then just various bits my tools and rack yeah. bolts and uh, all sorts of really connectors useful. and uh, cupboards full of different cables, boxes of power supplies. I end up with more power supplies <laughs> than anything. People leave phone chargers, power right. supplies for keyboards. Um, and then, yeah, obviously snares. There's loads of percussion in that cupboard. It's just, again, it's um, useful, isn't it? It's like just making sure that you've got choice because your drummer may bring his favourite snare and it sounds like oh, God, Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, you know, that can that can just ruin the it whole It can kill a session, sound. especially yeah. at a weekend as well when you've got no chance of yeah. bringing something else in. That's really good. That's no, nice. yeah, it's good to, um, it's definitely good to have options. Yeah, brilliant. Um, but yeah, there's, and then we've got a box down here of random old mics. Well, wow. that's late forties lustrophone thing. Um, it sounds like crap, <laughs> but sometimes as like a dirty drum yeah. mic or something, it's great. These are brilliant. These MD twenty one from the early sixties. Oh, wow. The only thing is, it's a pain trying to position it because you can't angle it right. or anything because it just screws straight onto the stand. It's it's kind of difficult to get the angle right, but. 
they sound amazing mm. on a saxophone right. or any brass um amazing on a guitar cab um there's all sorts of stuff old 50s harmonica mics <laughs> Again, you never know when this is going to come in handy. Yeah. You know, sometimes someone will want to cut that and do yeah. a distorted spoken word thing. I'd rather record it into that yeah. and commit to it yeah. than try and recreate it with plugins yeah. later. And again, it just kind of makes the whole experience more fun. Yeah. Um, well, sometimes you just need something to break up the flow. Um, I say the flow when when you're going down that um, yeah. that oh, you're, nobody's got any ideas. It's all going a bit stale. Something's got to just change. You just need that moment to take mm. everybody out of that that same thing that they're doing. So yeah, those things kind of like brilliant. People have read these rock and roll stories before, or they've read these stories of how their favorite records were yeah. made, and they want a bit of a taste of that of as well. Do. We experimented with this old mic from yeah. the fifties that smelled of cigarette smoke, and yeah. it just, it's like, uh, it kind of romanticizes it a bit for them. Yeah. Um, and like you say, it's, it's far more exciting for them to do that yeah. than just stand in front of a U87 and then me go, I'll do it with plugins later. Absolutely. Um, they're going to be far more excited when they play that mix to people and they're going to go, oh, here, we use this old 1940s microphone yeah. rather than just like, oh, he's, he's processed that and it sounds really authentic. They're not going to tell anyone about that, but they are going to talk about those weird mics that are in that box. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Brilliant. That's uh, well. That's my approach, anyway. <laughs> that's what I wanted to do when I was a musician, yeah, like recording. I wanted to do the stuff that I had read about and watched on, you know, like one of my favourite documentaries was A Year and a Half in the Life of Metallica, <laughs> and I think even now, like that's such a great thing to watch yeah. to see what a producer actually does, yeah. um, because you know, like Bob Rock really get stuck into Absolutely. those tracks and i know some people are a bit kind of feel that he ruined the band but i think fair play to him he I did what he, they wanted he brought him to the, do. he brought them to the attention of the world yeah he, they they needed a change and although you know some of the, a lot of the fans didn't like it he did give them that stepping off point to yeah. have a career that they're still there today yeah um i when i was at school doing this back in nine, uh, 91 we got that was the year that came out the yeah. black album but we got one of our lectures was being shown the making of pump and right. it was just brilliant because it was, it was like yeah oh yeah it was bob rock it worked no it was mike frazier oh right at the time bob rock was the other guy right. that came out of little mountain yeah but that was another one it was like this is what a producer does wow yeah. and this is how an album gets made and that and get a grip like yeah the drum sound on that record brilliant. like blows my mind like still but yeah, yeah he i think he's he's died now isn't he Mike bruce fair bruce fair yeah. he died, uh, died in the oh, early again. 2000s i think yeah oh, right but yeah, yeah i know but a bit of a legacy there to do with him wasn't he yeah, yeah. but yeah again you know that I, w I used to watch that kind of stuff Absolutely. and then so when I went into a studio I'd want to get to do all of those yeah. things and um, it just makes the whole thing uh, you know yeah. a bit more uh, magical absolutely oh, brilliant oh this is great yeah great so have you got any um, any exciting stuff in the near future you can talk about um, I have yeah yeah I've got some really good stuff coming up like some bands that I've wanted to work with for a while that of now fight you know it's nice when you've got a band and you think oh, i'd love to do stuff with them but yeah. i've never been one to solicit yeah work like i'll wait and i'll, I'll hope they come to me yeah. and so when you get the calls right we want to come and do your record Brilliant. um but yeah there's also but i i can't say who any of them are at the moment <laughs> but um but yeah there's That's some right, stuff come out for a year uh, but yeah there's stuff coming up that i'm really looking forward to doing Good. and uh, there's one particular band who I did a record for a few years ago and you know you hope they're going to come back yeah. and then I got the call recently to say they want to come back and right. do that and especially when you've done that and you think oh if I were to do that band again now I would do it differently mm. and it's always better I think like the mm. second time you know you know what to expect yeah. you know how they work well it's um, all personality led isn't it so yeah. you, you've sort of you've done that finding out process of about yeah who's got what idiosyncrasies and course, who really yeah. responds so yeah, yeah. brilliant
but yeah it's it's pretty varied like over the next few months Great. a lot of live sessions i do a lot of stuff with a videographer as well where we'll get people in they're performing live he films it i great. record it like a lot of stuff like that coming up that's great um yeah it's uh it's it's pretty varied the stuff that comes in and out of here brilliant well i appreciate it thank you so much finally nice to no, get down here have yeah a look. it's nice to have you guys here two or three definitely. years isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah awesome but um cool. great thank you